And this was a phase three study. It was a placebo controlled, uh, randomized placebo controlled study. Uh, patients were uh, randomized two to one to either Givinostat or placebo. And let me underline that both Givinostat and placebo were administered in addition to a, a stable corticosteroid treatment. So in essence, all patients were stable on corticosteroids and then when randomized to Givinostat and placebo. We are all the 179 boys in uh, um, Europe and North America. And uh, uh, the study lasted 18 months. So um, the boys were actually followed up for 18 months. They were uh, um, attending the center every three months uh, for the different evaluation for both efficacy and safety. And um, as primary endpoint, as you said, uh, we selected the Forster client, but then we actually measure also a number of other parameters. We measure uh, function by, for example, the six minute walk test, the time to rise, and the North Star. Uh, we measure strength, and we also measure the uh, fat infiltration uh, using magnetic resonance. This is actually the first phase three study that actually has uh, fat uh, um, quantitative assessment of fat fraction as a secondary endpoint. And uh, as I said, the uh, study lasted 18 months. At the end of the 18 months, uh, uh, all boys were invited to enter an open label study. And I would say um, more than 95% of them did. And this open label uh, study is still ongoing. So we have actually boys that are on treatment with Givinus that now for, uh, I would say on average, close to five years with a maximum of 10 years. The um, primary endpoint of the phase three study was met. So the uh, difference between placebo and Givinus that on the change uh, from baseline in the Forster climb was statistically significant. The difference was of one close to 1.8 uh, uh, seconds, which is uh, actually clinically meaningful looking at the literature. Then, as I said, we had a number of secondary endpoints. The result actually were um, all favoring Givinostat. Uh, and uh, as far as North Star change and the fat fraction change, we had a, a nominal, nominally statistically significant difference between Givinostat and Placebo. Let me underline, we um, assessed the secondary endpoints for the also the multiplicity. And when we applied multiplicity, the uh, result was, was not statistically significant, but as I said, uh, as nominal significance, uh, it was uh, there for North Star and Fat Fraction. Uh, we also, as usual, assess safety. Uh, the adverse event that we observed uh, were in line with what we had previously observed with Givinostat. Uh, what we see is some um, GI side effects, uh, diarrhea and uh, vomiting. Uh, we see some, uh, um, we see platelet reduction and some triglyceride increase. Uh, all these adverse events are actually monitorable and are manageable uh, with uh, those adjustments. And in fact, we have 95% uh, um, of the uh, boys actually completed the study uh, for the 18 months. So we actually uh, enrolled boys that were six years and older and were ambulant uh, at uh, the study start. And uh, the efficacy analysis were actually conducted on a group that we call the uh, on-target population, which was uh, um, beside, uh, uh, if you're meeting certain inclusion criteria based on functional test, they also had a fat fraction that was um, between 5% and 30%. And the reason why we did that is that because we wanted to identify a group of patients, uh, uh, so to enrich, if you want, the study for a group of patients that was not expected to lose ambulation in the 18 months, but was still actually showing some decline in uh, uh, the placebo arm. 
And actually that was successful because in the target population, we had only one patient that actually lost the ambulation in the 18 months and he was on um, the, in the placebo arm. And then uh, uh, we actually did see uh, a decline in the Forster climb and also in the other test uh, in the placebo arm. All right, and the final question, and I'll let you go to deal with rush hour traffic there, I guess, at this time of the day. <laughs> um, assuming the news tomorrow is good, um, how important is it for this, the Duchesne community to have uh, more and better treatment option, options available to them? Available to them, because right now they're so limited. Yeah, we do not have the cure uh, of Duchenne uh, today. Uh, there are different options, but certainly some of them are, for example, limited to a certain genotype. Uh, so you need to have, for example, the exon skipping are for a certain type of patient. Uh, and so obviously having a treatment like Givinasta, which uh, is, if you want, uh, uh, does not, the effect of Givinasta is not related to a specific gene, uh, genetic mutation. So it's, it can act in with all the uh, mutation. Obviously, that I think is uh, something uh, of benefit to, to, to the community. And I think that would apply in general. So obviously, the more treatment we have, the more I think we can serve uh, um, this uh, this group of of boys and and adults that have this uh, very important disease.